Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and they just released Vegas Pro 19, and it is amazing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the differences between Vegas 18 and 19 in some pretty good detail. So this video may get a little bit long, and I apologize in advance about that. But everything will be timestamped in the description, and it should be also timestamped on the YouTube video itself in those sections to check it out. But let's start it off by opening Vegas Pro 19. We can see right off the bat we got a new font, new splash screen, looks pretty awesome. And once it loads, we have the familiarity of Vegas itself. Now, the bones didn't change, but a lot of the GUI did. We can see up at the top here and at the bottom here that there's a brand new icon rework. They got a whole new set of icons in there. We'll load up 18 and show you. This is 18, and you can see their icons. 19, 18, 19, 18, 19. It looks pretty good. You know, pause the video if you want to check it out yourself. But the icon rework is the first thing. So they also redid the colors of the tracks as well. So we start adding tracks in here. We can see it's a lot of a more pastel sort of look, like a lighter summery feel to it. Really gets away from that old maroon and, you know, whatever the maroon and weird green that they had going on a long time ago. So this is the whole new way. A good nice color spectrum of pastel colors is what their tracks are. So if you add things in here, Another thing you'll notice is that they took away the headers, they gave you an option to remove the headers, and they got the thumbnail shown all across the video track itself. This is all adjustable and removable if you don't like it, that's not a problem. Even these colors are changeable if you don't like them. They also changed their font and their desktop icons, and that got reworked as well. So you'll know that instead of the square black and blue V, they now have a simple V in a circular form. Kind of looks a lot like Discord, which is pretty cool. Another part of the GUI that they changed is the color grading panel. So we hold Alt and press G on a clip. We see that the new color grading panel looks a lot different right here. So they changed the color wheels, they thinned them out, and then they added the ability to, when you drag the center dot all the way to an edge, it goes from 0% saturation to 100% saturation of the color that you're going for. So if we drag a few of these out, we can see that the colors match up and it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to go into extreme detail about the color grading panel because I have a video coming out on that which does go into extreme detail. But I just wanted to show you that, yes, they changed the color grading panel around. They added RL color wheels, LUTs, input. If you drag this out, they have a split version of all your curves. It's really awesome. So I'm going to Alt-G back out of here. And next up here, we see a new button called Vegas Hub Login. Vegas Hub is something they added, which is basically their cloud storage and program that syncs between devices, mobile devices, and Vegas's timeline. So if you have Vegas Hub downloaded on your phone, take a video on your phone, you can sync it to Vegas Hub, and then when you log into Vegas Pro 19 and you sign in with Vegas Hub, you can go into your Hub Explorer tab, which will normally be down here, which we can add it. We go to View, Window, Hub Explorer, and then in here, you're going to see everything that you recorded and synced to Vegas Hub on your smart devices. Again, I have a video on that which will be coming out later, which will go into extreme detail, but that is a new feature. And that is specifically for Vegas subscription users, Vegas 365 users. Next, also for Vegas 365 users, if you go to Tools, we have a text-to-speech option right here, which allows you to type in text and an AI-generated voice of many different voices, male, female, all sorts of nationalities, all sorts of accents, all sorts of languages, can be used to turn your text into voice. Video coming out on that, stay tuned for sure. That's just an awesome feature for 365 users. Another cool thing they added is scene detection. Normally when you have a bunch of different scenes in a clip and you want to split it, you got to manually go ahead and find it. Well, they made it to where you can automatically do that. You can do it in a few different ways. If you go into your project media tab and you right click on this, you can detect the scenes and add it to the timeline. So from your project media, wherever your timeline is landed, if you select this one, it'll throw it on your timeline and then split it up when it detects the clips. You can also detect the scenes and create sub clips for this. So if you click this one, it's going to analyze your scene and create sub clips for it right here. Third thing is inside the video effects, you can go all the way down to scene detection and drag that effect onto your clip. And then you have a few different parameters you could change. Hard cut sensitivity, fade, and dissolve sensitivity. The higher you go, the more it'll try to detect but it can also create a lot of false positives on these as well. But it will do its best to detect hard cuts, fades, and dissolves. My favorite way of doing it is in Project Media. So if you right click on the Project Media and choose Detect Scenes and Add to Timeline, it'll throw it on the timeline and then split it up where it detects different scenes. Extremely convenient. 
Another cool feature they added are adjustment track. If you're unfamiliar with what an adjustment track is, it's basically a timeline track that you can add effects to and fade in and out. Instead of having to add it to a specific clip itself, you can actually add effects that normally go on media onto the timeline above the media. So let me give you an example. If we right click on the left hand side here, we can see this new option, add adjustment track. And we're gonna add a couple of them because you can stack these as well. So we're gonna add one, two, maybe three. And then we're gonna put one of these clips, how about a couple of these clips? We're gonna put it in between these two. How about right here? So if I add effects, let's just add effect down here. So I'm gonna go to video effects and we're gonna do, how about sharp? No, how about something really easy to see, soft contrast. So I'm gonna add soft contrast to this adjustment track right here. So I've added it to this timeline and anything below this adjustment track will be soft contrasted, as you can see. And we have a composite line that's put on every single one of these adjustment layers that you can drag up and down or even double click and add keyframes and move them, which allows you to create really unique transitions between effects that you could never do before. So let's maybe put a starburst on this adjustment track. Let's do a sphere eyes on this top one here. So now you could add multiple effects on the tracks and then double click and make some keyframes to create some really cool transitions. So I dropped this here. So in this example, it's reducing the starburst and adding the sphere eyes in this transition. So now that you have the ability to do adjustment tracks, you can create really unique effects and transitions between these effects. Another new feature that they added, if you press Alt M, that brings up the motion tracking panel. Motion tracking allows you to track and apply things to that tracked data. But they added the ability, if you click this little drop down menu, to import motion tracking data directly from Mocha Pro. Mocha is the Hollywood industry standard for motion tracking and 3D motion tracking. So Vegas now allowing you to import Mocha's motion tracking is next level. I'll have a video on that in the future to go into more detail because it's just way too much to add in this video. So along with scene detection, one of the new plugins that they added as well is the upscale plugin. Now I know what you're saying, they used to have this thing called smart upscale, but they've completely redone it and used AI now to help upscale and make it much better. That smart upscale was definitely old and outdated. So for this upscale, if you drag and drop that onto a clip, you'll be able to drag the slider up and down to tell it how much you want to upscale and how much it's going to punch in and zoom in and add detail. So this works really good for older clips that are, you know, fuzzy and old VHS stuff, kind of like that. But for newer clips, you're really not going to tell a difference because most stuff shot now is high quality enough to where you, you won't need to upscale. But that's another new plugin that they added. So on the note of talking about upgraded plugins, we saw Smart Upscale. And another one they updated is Style Transfer. They improved the AI for this and made it much faster if you wanted to drag and drop a cool style on these videos, which you'll see in a future video of that going into extreme detail. Not only did they update style transfer, they also updated colorization as well. So they improved the AI, so for black and white videos and black and white pictures, colorization is really going to shine. Now on to some other cool things. They did add video file format support for, officially, ProRes, ProRes RAW, and Blackmagic RAW. These are, of course, in beta at the moment, but Vegas now is one of the very few editors that can edit RAW. And I think it's one of the only editors that can edit all three. I know Premiere can edit ProRes RAW, and Resolve can edit Blackmagic RAW, but I don't think they can edit each other's RAW videos. Vegas allows you to edit all three, and it's only going to get better, because currently it's in the beta phase. They made some really good improvements to HDR workflow, which includes NVIDIA and main concept hardware encoding for HDR presets, upgrades to the Color I.O. support, upgrades to ASUS configurations, which all help HDR's workflow be more efficient. Last cool new thing over here is in the Project Notes tab. We can see when we press Note, it recorded our timeline cursor location. So if we moved away and we wanted to go back to this Note and say, hey, go back to the Note right where I put my cursor, it'll jump your cursor right to that point in the timeline. You can even update it, say, actually, it's not right there. I want to move it up here, and you can say, use this instead. So if you move away and you go back to it, it's going to remember your cursor's location on the timeline. Thirdly, if you just wanted to manually click this one, you can type in exactly where you want it to be. You have a drop down to change your notes color. You can even change your notes label. And these notes are extremely useful for large projects and for a lot of editors editing the same project. Notes and organization are very important.
So now let's talk about one of the most important things, is the new way they're going to be producing Vegas in the future, updating it, and the pricing structure. If we go to Vegas' website, we can see that they have three options. As you know, they got rid of Movie Studio. Magix is now going to be editing that, and they're just calling it Movie Studio instead of Vegas Movie Studio. So all of the developers that were developing Vegas Movie Studio are now going to help focus on developing and improving Vegas Pro. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're not going to be releasing annual releases of new versions of Vegas every year. They stopped that. This is the last one. From this point on, they're just going to be releasing major updates and improvements as those major updates and improvements are created. You still can buy perpetual licenses, you know, forever licenses, or you can go subscription as well. They drastically reduce the cost of their perpetual licenses, which is awesome. So if you go to the license and you say new purchase for any one of these, New purchase for Vegas Edit is $250, for Vegas Pro is $400, for Vegas Post is $600. This used to be $1,000, this used to be $500, and this used to be $300, usually roughly around that area. Then they got rid of Vegas Suite entirely. So because of the whole, they're not releasing new versions every year, and they're just going to be doing upgrades, if you buy a perpetual license, you have a limited time of free upgrades. And I believe that limited time is a year, but I'll have to check back in on that. So for the sake of this video, let's just say it is a year. If you buy Vegas Edit for 250 bucks, you have one year of free upgrades for any of the major upgrades that they come out with. So let's just say they come out with a brand new feature, something really awesome like modern HSL, and it updates to the program. If you're within that one year of that perpetual license when you bought it, you're going to get that upgrade for free. If they release it over a year past the time you bought it, you'll have to pay for an upgrade and get another year of support. Would you be drop this down to these upgrades? It's 119 for Vegas Edit, 200 bucks for Vegas Pro, and 300 bucks for Vegas Post. Once you buy the upgrade, then you'll have another year of upgrades and downloads that you can get as they come out. Now, if you go to the subscription model, as long as you have an active subscription, then you will always get updates as they come out every single time, and you don't have to worry about it. So some people like perpetual, some people like subscription-based. Vegas is giving you both options, and this is how they're gonna do things in the future. So let's go ahead and look at the new differences between Edit, Pro, and Post. Vegas Edit, it's the base program, the full unrestricted editing program you're already familiar with and love. It comes with all the new things I talked about earlier. And if you get the subscription version, it has its own exclusive things that that comes with. If you have the subscription version, you get Vegas Hub, which I was talking about, which is their cloud service. You have 20 gigabytes of their cloud storage, mobile to timeline. And you have the ability to download stuff from Vegas content, which is the royalty-free stock content. And you can download 20 HD assets per month, 1080p assets. If you go to Vegas Pro and get the subscription, you get everything Vegas Edit has to offer, but your mobile to timeline cloud storage jumps to 50 gigs. You get unlimited royalty-free HD 1080p content that you can download. And you get that text-to-speech I was talking about earlier. Not only do you get that, I think the most important thing that you're going to get with Vegas Pro is advanced chroma keying with Boris's FX Primat Studio. This is the top of the line Hollywood chroma keying that they use in almost everything Hollywood, like Lord of the Rings and things like that. This is the best keyer you can get and it comes with Vegas Pro. Doesn't even have to be the subscription one. Even the perpetual version of Vegas Pro will come with Boris FX Primat Studio. That's awesome right there. And if you do get Vegas Pro, you get Vegas Stream along with that, which is their live streaming program that allows you to do kind of like what OBS does, you know, stream video games, stream to YouTube, Twitch, things like that. And then you also get the familiar SoundForge Audio Studio, which is an audio editing program specifically. Now, if you jump up to Vegas Post, you get everything in Vegas Pro and Vegas Edit, and your royalty-free stock content goes up from 1080p to 4K, unlimited downloads of it. Your mobile to timeline cloud storage goes up from 50 gigabytes to 100, and you still get text to speech. Now, Vegas Post also includes Vegas Effects, which is kind of like After Effects. It allows you to create special effects, video effects, and animations, and things like that. It has amazing motion tracking features, and I use it all the time, and I've made many tutorials with it so far. And then you also get Vegas Image, which is basically like a mixture of kind of like Photoshop, but if you're using a video editor to create an image and using a lot of video editing techniques to create that image, but you get a little bit of some of the tools that normal image editors have, that's Vegas Image. And so those are the differences. I know it's a lot, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer them the best I can. 
But that's going to wrap up this brief comparison between 18 and 19 and what's new and how they're doing things. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there to help me out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.